Well, it looks like we have our next Blackaren entry for the year, and it's under the same thing of being abusive or violent towards their man. So this woman's name is Robin Williams. Yes, it's spelled exactly like the actor's name, Robin Williams, you know, legendary comedian actor who, you know, passed away from suicide a few years ago. But no connection, of course, clearly whatever, it's just that they happen to have the same name. But this woman, as you can see by her uniform, she is indeed a cop and, you know, out of Houston. And she was also planning to run for mayor. As a matter of fact, they said she was like a top candidate for mayor, for the mayor of Houston. But now that looks like that's most likely not going to happen because this woman has just been, you know, accused of abusing her boyfriend in a multitude of ways, mostly physical, of course. One, of course, they're saying it involves a taser. Another involves a baton. So this woman just literally, I guess, took out her frustration from her job on her her boyfriend at home. But I'm going to go ahead now and read the article so we can get more details. A police officer running to be Houston's next mayor is facing criminal charges after allegedly using her department issue baton and taser to attack her boyfriend. Missouri City Police Officer Robin Williams, age 32, was arrested on Tuesday for assault, continuous family violence in connection with two incidents involving her boyfriend, Jermaine Taylor, over the last six months, according to a Harris County criminal complaint. The Missouri City Police Department said in a statement that Williams, who was now on paid administrative leave, was taken into custody at the police department as a result of a criminal investigation conducted by the Harris County Precinct 7 Constable's Office. Williams, who launched her long shot bid for mayor last year under the slogan Back the Blue, but not the Bullies in Blue, posted a $15,000 bond after being held at Harris County Detention Center. It was unclear if she had been released around midday Wednesday. Neither she nor her campaign immediately responded to a request for comment, and it was unclear if she had an attorney. Now, I'm curious, will this incident right here affect her campaign, or are they going to be leaning in on her because she's a woman? Because let that have been a man, especially a black man, it would have been over. I had to throw in especially a black man because we see what's going on or not going on with Dana White. Julia Williams the officer's campaign manager told the Houston Chronicle a statement would be issued soon. Authorities say Williams assaulted Taylor using her police baton in August and again four months later. The complaint also says Taylor took a video of the August 4th incident where Williams could be seen in her Missouri City Police Department t-shirt yelling and hitting him multiple times with the baton. Taylor told police that sometime in August, Williams also shot him with her taser. Bitch, you broke my phone and you know that I'm a police officer, Williams allegedly told Taylor in the August 4th video, according to the complaint. Bitch, I'll kill you, ho. Now, this is what she's saying to her boyfriend. Now, with the way that that's being framed, you would swear that was a man saying that to her or him saying that to her. Like, you can just hear the masculine energy coming out of her. So she probably feels because she's a cop that she has some kind of level of superiority over this man. And that's just what I'm gravitating towards. And you know what it also reminds me of? Do y'all remember that video that Beyonce, for that song Beyonce had a few years ago called If I Was a Boy? What was her role as a as a occupation in that video? She was a cop. And it's basically what, what it would be like, you know, if she was a man. You know, Sierra had a song a few years before that that came out called If I Were a Boy. Or something along those lines, but y'all know what I'm talking about. And in that video, she was playing both sides of if she was a dude and if she was a woman. And of course, that was also around the time those rumors were swirling around about her about being a hermaphrodite. But we ain't going to go back down that rabbit hole. We just going to leave that in the early 2000s where, it, where, it should be, where it's going to stay at. The allegations against Williams are disturbing on their own, but are especially remarkable given her mayoral candidacy is centered around combating crime and repairing police and community relations. According to her campaign website, Williams served in the United States Marine Corps for four years before joining the American Red Cross International Social Services Department in 2018. Eventually, she joined the Missouri City Police Department last February. Williams announced her mayoral bid, 
landing her among at least eight candidates hoping to replace Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner in the November 2023 election. Though she has not previously been elected to public office, her website says she hopes to lead our city in the right direction. I don't see how seeing as how her household is in disarray. And she's the one that's causing the chaos. As a police officer, I have seen the good and bad of our city. Have you looked within yourself? Because I'm seeing bad rather than good based on these details. I want to suppress crime and ensure that the residents of Houston are safe. Well, it seems like your boyfriend, if he still is her boyfriend, is not safe. I truly stand by my campaign slogan, back the blue, but not the bullies in blue. There is no place for a bully in society, and I plan on enforcing that. You know, the more and more her campaign slogan goes on and on, the more it seems like she's contradicting herself based on how she's treating her boyfriend. I don't know if this is still boyfriend or if this is ex, but somehow, some way it's, it's filtered in there somehow. Our officers do an amazing job and I want to promote the good deeds of good officers. Again, <laughs> contradictory her line by line, her entire campaign slogan contradicts itself based on the behavior that she has been displaying over the course of the year with her boyfriend. The allegations from the Harris County Precinct 7 Constable's office suggest she may be part of the problem. She has pledged to correct. <laughs> there it is, right there, the next line. The complaint says an officer was called to Williams' house on New Year's Eve on reports of a domestic violence case at the house. Taylor alleged that Williams assaulted him with her police baton after the pair got into a fight. During the altercation, Taylor said that Williams punched him in the mouth, causing a scratch on his lip and causing him to bleed from the mouth. Officers said that on the scene, Taylor also described an August 4th incident where he alleged that Williams used her baton on him multiple times, causing Nick Taylor to suffer knots on his body from where Williams struck him. The complaint states that in the video, Taylor letter provided of the incident, Williams is seen hitting Taylor in his body and legs. When making the complaint last month, Taylor also claimed that Williams has used her department issue taser on him, indicating that Williams went into the bedroom, grabbed her taser and shot him with it. Man, listen, this woman is off the chain. And at least there is some video evidence that this guy has. The fact that he got video means that he said, look, I have to prove without the shadow of a doubt that I'm being abused in this relationship because someone's not going to believe me. A lot of people's not going to believe me. That goes back to the Bukharan video that I just did about that woman who hit her boyfriend or whoever this guy was with that bowling ball, almost killing him and having him bleed from the head and how. There could have been stuff going on before then, but no one would really believe him. Now, another reason why I did this as a Blackaren video, because it would have been a Blackaren video regardless, but this right here amped it up even more. And that was looking at the comments on a post that this was on via Instagram, where you had some people, again, some more black women. And this is reflective of the comment section on the threads that I saw on Twitter. We had a lot of black women saying we don't know the whole story how do we know she wasn't that he wasn't abusing her what did he do i saw those comments a lot what did he do they always assume that the man had to have done something to the woman first in order for her to act out in this way as if she's not capable of initiating these altercations first because it's no shock or surprise to anyone that a lot of times, and this is not for every woman, but a lot of times, a lot of women instigate a lot of these altercations with men. And it could be men they're intimate with, married to, in a relationship with, engaged to, or these can be complete strangers. A lot of them instigate this stuff because society coddles them. A lot of them don't have any type of consequences whatsoever. I mean, look at these Karens. That's a prime example right there. Always getting in somebody's face, always yelling with their coffee and cigarette breath and toe. And it's a lot of times it's a, another man because society says don't hit women. Never put a hand, put your hands on a woman. Well, that's what Dana White said he wouldn't do. And well, we see what happened with that. That's why he's getting that's one reason he's getting fried right now. You literally contradicted yourself. You should have never said that. One thing you should never say is you should you would never there's no excuse to put, not put your hands on a woman. The minute you say that, that's going to send a trigger to her some some corner of her brain 
that this man is not going to put his hands on me. And if I can document that he said this, when I take his ass to court, I'm going to show that. And hopefully this will work in my favor. So you better be very careful with your words. Never, ever say that there's no reason to put your hands on somebody, because if they give you a reason, take that reason and, and go freely with it. It is what it is, because when Dana White said that. So you mean to tell me if a woman spit on you, if she hits you, if she tries to harm you in any way or tries to unalive you, there's no reason that you shouldn't try to stop her. She should just be able to do it right. So when you think about this, this woman was using her baton, something that was given to her to use as a part of her uniform. She literally brought her work home with her. This man is lucky that she did not use her real gun. She he's lucky that she only went as far as using the taser. But she still shouldn't have even used that. And it sounds to me like he's never gotten any to any kind of physical altercation with her, because if he had with the strength, he probably would have had, depending on where he hit her, like, say, on the face and he left a mark. I'm sure the people at her job would have known something if she decided to want to go in and try to, you know, say mask it with some makeup or whatever the case may be. Or she would have said something. But then again, with her being a cop and she has those weapons, she probably would have tried to kill him. But from the looks of it, even when he wasn't trying to be confrontational with her that's what it looks like she was doing here i mean she used the baton on him they said that he had knots on his body from getting hit with that baton she used the taser but you got these other blackarens in the comment section much like the one with the bowling ball bimbo one saying what did he do as if somehow this is his fault again this we live in a society where if men are being in, abused domestically by their women, you have to question what did the man do as, as if it was his fault, as if he brought this on himself, or as if he was the one that was leading the charge that led him to getting into these positions. I even saw some comments where it was stating how she had came home early and then something just started to happen that people started to imply that he was cheating on her with another woman in their home. But there's no evidence to support that. Like they literally went in that comment section, tried to find any way to make it seem like she was completely innocent. I even saw someone say hashtag I stand with Robin Williams for mayor. I kid you not. I'm not even making none of this up. So the reason why she ended up in this Blue Karen, because she was going to end up there anyway, was not because of what she did, but it's also because of the enabling behind her actions. Much like it was with the bowling ball bimbo, where people was enabling her actions. Again, if the roles were reversed, it would have been hashtag protect black women. I'm willing to bet that's how it would have went. Never would you was never would you ever see a hashtag that says protect black men. Never will you see it. And this right here, as well as the other one. As well as when black men are being murdered unjustly by these cops. When you when you see it all play out in the trajectory that it does. That'll it'll never trend. Because that's part of the norm.